basically serves the same purpose as our wiring today. It's just a completely different way of going about it. And Hi, this is Stephen with Service Plus Electrical, and I'm here with David with the Electrician Ed. And we're here to talk about knob and tube wiring. This is one of the areas where we see a lot of the most dangerous situations in older houses. And so we decided to bring you this series on knob and tube wiring. And this first, so this is going to be a multi video series. On um, this first video, we're going to talk about knob and tube 101, just what is it? We have some examples. We're going to show you what it looks like. And um, if you haven't checked out our website, we're posting these articles that David has written on our website. So by the time this is up, then we will have this article on our website as well to go along with it. The article goes into much more depth, which some people may be curious about, um, especially people that are curious about entering the field and things like that. If you have an older house, I would suggest that this is probably uh, far more important than than you might have thought. And so this is why we're putting out this content. These are the types of things that um, we have the knowledge to understand the dangers and we're trying to use that knowledge to explain to people. And so that's what we're doing here. So uh, thanks for joining me again, David. Thank you for having me, Stephen. So I think I think a lot of people have heard of this knob and tube wiring, and uh, it's just kind of a a scary thing that gets tossed into the conversation when someone buys the house, and then mm. it's often forgot about after that. Um, yeah. Where do we want to start with what is knob and tube wiring? Okay, um, well, knob and tube was probably it. Well, it was the the most popular wiring method available from the very beginning back in the 1880s when electricity started um, you know really developing and and they began to put wiring into homes and there were there were other methods um, from what I have been able to gather and I'm not sh I'm you know trying to find the facts and nail down the facts on this stuff is a little bit difficult this far out, but um, um, but basically it was the first standardized wiring method in the United States, and it was it was only allowed to be put into residences, residential homes. Mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't you couldn't put it into commercial buildings or industrial yet. So they did have conduit back then, um, which. You know, you you could have used that method in the home also, but it's a lot more expensive and time consuming. Mm -hmm. um, so it was the it was the one that made the most sense to uh, to wire your house up that way, and people didn't really know any different anyway. So we're talking a hundred plus. So you said eighteen eighty was kind of the starting area. So yeah. we're talking 100 plus years ago and the, the history kind of disintegrates the farther you go back. Yeah. And so David's done a lot of research on, you know, where did this come from? And and that's what we're here to talk about today. Mm -hmm. um, we do have some examples. So where should we where should we start talking about as far as what is the knob and tube wiring? OK, well, it's um, it's it looks like its name. Um, it's. What it is is two single conductors wires that are run next to one another or kind of separated a little bit um, and they they run through a system of knobs that are made out of porcelain there you go so here i got a knob and yeah you see yeah as david said they're made out of porcelain this is a knob where they use to support the wires and here is a second one so as you see in the stud bay They'll run two of these, what we call hot and neutral, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what it'll look like. Oftentimes in the attic is the only place you'll see it nowadays, mm -hmm. sometimes in the basement. Yeah, and notice that those uh, the wires that are wrapped around, those are supposed to be the same um, strength as the 
conductor that it's you know holding. Mm -hmm. um, that was just one of the requirements that they had in there. So that would be like a wire tie. Um, that little bit of wire is not supposed to be electrified, but you can see if it's coiled around the other one, it's it's going to get a little bit of induction there. Um, I didn't even think about that. Uh, uh -huh. And that's going to come up later when we start talking about it. But um, so these conductors. The, By conductor, not, we mean wires. Mm -hmm. right? These wi the wires were not like they are today. They used an insulate. They were still coming up with this stuff, uh, doing the best they can, could. And I believe that they did know about all the the principles that we know about today, Faraday's laws of induction and um, Lenz's law. And I'm I'm not I'm not real knowledgeable in in all of those things. I just kind of understand the gist of it, so I'm able to explain it. Um, but they used um, natural rubber for their insulation around the conductor. Now, that probably changed, and your conductors that you sh just showed us, they look like they are probably newer, and they've also got mm -hmm. a cloth um, outer sheathing around it, it looks like. So, but um, originally, they were just the rubber going mm -hmm. around these conductors from what I understand. And um, so they're, they're copper, copper wires, and they were something like 99.7% pure copper, something mm -hmm. like that. I mean, it was good copper. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. The problem that we have with uh, any kind of wiring is not the, not the, conductor part but it's the insulation we got to worry about that the outer part of it the outer part yeah and so yeah and so we're going to get more in depth on the on the next video about what the pros and cons of knob and tube are and it's more on the con side because of how old it is but so we went over what the knob is and you've seen that okay this is this is the knob yeah and and i guess it'd be a good time to show you what the tube is and so these wires were running through these knobs and tubes. Here's he's showing a tube that um, they would drill, they would bore a hole through the framing members, the wood framing members, and run their conductors through the wood. So the the uh, the tube acted like a an extra barrier between the wood and the the wire and the insulation. Yeah, and and then they were supposed to keep the knobs would hold uh, the wires away at least one inch from the surfaces that they were running on. And, uh, and I have a I have a good picture that I figured this would be a good time to share that because let me know if you can see it. OK, yeah. OK, they, so th this is a this is a building that we were working in and this shows you where these tubes they go through the framing members. And like David said, basically they're protecting the they're protecting the insulation from scraping, and they're probably also to to protect the wire from any uh, screws or nails. I would assume as well. Mm -hmm. I do have another one here with that shows um, wires going through them, which you can see there was insulation on this. So we'll get in, into that problem later. But yeah, that gives you an idea of what the tubes look like when they're actually installed. OK, uh, the nice thing about this picture is you can really see how nice and neat they like to keep things um, nice and uniform. They maintain their spacing. Um, so the we, we talked about the the uh, tubes went through the the framing members. And then the knobs, I don't know if you had a picture of that or not, but uh, the knobs were just driven into the framing members to run them parallel with the uh, framing mm -hmm. wherever they needed to go. And so that gives you kind of a, a glimpse of the overview of what the knob and tube wiring is, what it looks like. It basically serves the same purpose as our wiring today. It's just a completely different way of going about it. and. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we didn't get too much into the into the subject on this one, but we really just wanted to 
give you that glimpse of what is it because a lot of people have heard of it but they don't really know what it is it's all hidden behind the walls and so now that you've seen what that is in our next video we're going to go over the pros and cons of knob and tube wiring and after that we'll compare it to the modern wiring that we have today and then the following videos we'll talk about what it's like to upgrade um, and what it's like to fix those problems by replacing it with newer wiring. And so that being said, uh, we'll see you again on the next video about the pros and cons of knob and tube wiring. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Stephen.